Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer on Saturday the 25th of September. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me for morning prayer today as part of our ministry from Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. Let's bow our heads together as we pray. Psalm 91 You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honour them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Thanks be to God for his words to us today. Now let's pray together. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and our praise for all that you've done for us. We thank you for the splendour of the whole creation for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Now let's take a moment in quiet to confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we confess that at times we ignore your will for us, we doubt your purposes in the world and fail to do the good that would make a difference in our world to bring glory to your name. We're sorry for the good we've left undone and for the things that we've done that mar your image in us and defile your world. We pray that you'd have mercy upon us and grant us a new way of looking at your world so that we may reflect your priorities. So may Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue to read through the first book of Kings, and as we read some excerpts today, we read in chapter 22, beginning to read at the 29th verse. So the king of Israel and king Jehoshaphat of Judah went up to Ramoth-Gilead. 
The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle, but you wear your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Aram had commanded the thirty-two captains of his chariots, Fight with no one small or great, but only with the king of Israel. When the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they said, It is surely the king of Israel. So they turned the fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried out. When the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. But a certain man drew his bow and unknowingly struck the king of Israel between the scale armour and the breastplate. So he said to the driver of his chariot, Turn around and carry me out of the battle, for I am wounded. The battle grew hot that day, and the king was propped up in his chariot, facing the Arameans, until at evening he died. The blood from the wound had flowed into the bottom of the chariot. Then about sunset a shout went through the army, Every man to his city, and every man to his country. So the king died and was brought to Samaria. They buried the king in Samaria. They washed the chariot by the pool of Samaria. The dogs licked up his blood, and the prostitutes washed themselves in it, according to the word of the Lord that he had spoken. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all that he did, and the ivory house that he built, and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? So Ahab slept with his ancestors, and his son Ahaziah succeeded him. Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of King Ahab of Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 25 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azubar, daughter of Shirli. He walked in all the way of his father Asa. He did not turn aside from it, doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. Yet the high places were not taken away, and the people still sacrificed and offered incense on the high places. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his power that he showed, and how he waged war, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Thanks be to God for his word. Yesterday we read about how Micaiah predicted failure for this uh, excursion to Ramoth Gilead that the kings would make. And in verse 38, um, after the battle has has resulted in a great defeat, um, the account says this, that whatever happened according to the word of the Lord that he'd spoken. And it's a sign and it's a reminder to us that in good times, in hard times, and here now according to uh, God's word, God holds a great sway and involvement in the public life of his people. God is calling his people uh, to do the things he asks them to do and to refrain from evil. The sad thing is that here the people of God, the kings in particular, think they know best. And so they pursue uh, a path which utterly uh, leads to destruction. The word of God was spoken and the kings ignored it. We can look at that story and say, oh foolish, how dreadful they were. Let me ask us a question. How often do we know the good we should do? Or we know the evil that we should stay away from? and The sins that we should not commit? And yet we still fall foul of ignoring God's will. Now, we are indeed blessed to know that our sins are forgiven and that when we repent and turn from what we know to be wrong that the Lord forgives us and restores us if we repent we show our sorrow and pledge to live a different life but we should not presume upon God's forgiveness we should not presume upon his grace and uh, ignore that call to righteous living may God help us to do what is right in his sight to hear his word and to obey it because God indeed influences uh, the affairs of the world and God is involved and interested in how we live day by day. May we live always our lives as it was said by somebody once, live our lives as before an audience of one. Let's confess our faith together now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's pray together. Let us pray. Firstly, today we pray for one another, for those who we know who are ill, those who are grieving, those who are suffering with physical and mental ill health. We pray too for those who continue to suffer from the effects of the coronavirus COVID-19 and ask that the Lord will restore them to full strength and health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We've been praying all week for the work of BMS World Mission in Guinea. And we pray in particular for Victor and Caroline's colleagues working with different nationalities across the country to see people come to faith in Christ. We pray that those nationalities, varied and diverse, would find ways to work together effectively and that God's name would be honoured. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And tonight, uh, Open Doors for the Persecuted Church are hosting a standing strong event as they encourage Christians in this country to stand alongside those who are persecuted because they are Christians, wherever they may be. And we pray that as people attend, they will grow in their faith in Jesus and their love for his people. In particular tonight, as people give testimonies from India and the Middle East. Lord, bless and encourage your people wherever they may be and help them to stand strong and stand firm for Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. God bless you and keep you safe until we meet again tomorrow. Goodbye.